Hello, and welcome to the Let's Do Video podcast. My name is David Maldo, and Let's Do Video is your source for online information about the video conferencing revolution, uh, visual collaboration, unified communication, anything dealing with remote working technology and strategies. Now, I'm here today with a special guest. This is Will McDonald from Starleaf, and here to discuss a very interesting topic, uh, which is a new security issue for H323 video conferencing. Now, those of you in the industry know Will. He needs no introduction. Uh, but in case you're new, he is the CTO of Starleaf and uh, a key member of the Starleaf team that came from the Codian team. Now, the word disruption is thrown around in this industry like it's, like it's nobody's business. But if we were really to make a list of the top five disruptors in the last 15 years, um, Codian would be in the top three for sure and probably have a good, a good battle for number one. But we're not here to, today to talk about Codian. We're here to talk about this security thing. Uh, now, well, first of all, thank you for being here. Um, well, thank you, David. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. And I, I read a recent uh, series of, of blogs and, and LinkedIn posts from you talking about um, how the H323, our traditional video conferencing world, uh, is under attack. Um, now, the, uh, that's not too much of a surprise. Anytime you have a communications network, whether it's the old-fashioned mail in the mailbox, um, the email, um, even the telephone. I mean, we have we have no call list now. Once you're out there, peep, the bad guys are out there, and they're going to find a way to get us. The SIP world has been under attack for a long time, but they haven't really been getting that um, H323. And and now well, they. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, that's right. Because I, and I think part of the reason that H323 has been exempt for so long is because. Compared to SIT, it was such a small target market. Mm. Like when the computer viruses started coming around, Macs were immune for a long time because there just weren't enough of them. And then eventually, there's enough out there that it makes it worthwhile for the virus, uh, for the hackers to go after them. So I think that's why H 3 is now becoming under target. There's enough H 3 systems out there to make it worthwhile. Uh, so, so we're victims of our own success. Now that we're out there, now uh -huh. that we're established, the bad guys are going to get us. Okay, now, now, the first question I have is I want to understand these attacks better because a couple of years ago I wrote a blog. There were some um, good guy hackers that were calling into meeting rooms and saying, hey, you can call into a meeting room and spy on people and listen to their – like, well, you know, I mean, you could see if someone's calling in. Is this a real threat or are any bad guys doing this or is it just the, the good guy showing that it's possible? Is that from – my, from my understanding of your blog, that's not what this is about. They're not really trying to, to spy on us. Is that – Correct. That, that's not what this is about. Um, although that is a security problem. Um, as, as a part of this whole uh, investigation that we've been doing, uh, part of what we, what, what we came up with is we started looking to see how many uh, meeting room systems were on the outside of firewalls exposed to the internet and set with auto answer. And I was able to call into quite a few meeting rooms. One of them had someone in it working on a laptop I was able to control their camera and zoom right in and see what they were typing. So um, although the attacks we're seeing are not about information security, they do highlight the problem of information security. Okay, so it, it is possible and we should turn off our auto answer in unsecured environments if we're not behind a firewall and, and keep an eye on those cameras, make sure the monitor's turned on so if someone calls in, we can see who's calling us. Um, but Correct. those can be deal dealt with by, you know, smart procedures in the room. But um, you said this highlights that, but it's not really what's happening. What is really No, what's happening here is much more along the lines of what we've been seeing in the SIP world, because our SIP uh, IP PBXs typically, um, quite often at least, not typically, but quite often they are accessible uh, to the Internet so that we can make free IP-based calls. And there are a family of, uh, of virus software, uh, with the most common one is called SIP Vicious, and it goes around and it looks for SIP endpoints that are exposed on the internet, and then it just calls them, and it will call them with different prefixes, so it'll try with a 9, it'll try with double zero, try all the things that are common in a PBX to try and get dialed on, because what they're after is they're after an exposed loophole where someone has left a... Um, a dial plan rule open so that you can get from the internet back out to get dial tone. And once they have that, then they'll be going and selling that dial tone to people who want to call their relatives in places where it's really expensive to call to, like South America 
or India or the Far East. There's a lot of places where phone calls are still really expensive. So that's what they're after. And um, so people have got much better at, at dealing with that. And there's a, there's a whole class of products called SPIT, which stands for spam. I don't remember what that acronym is. <laughs> but it's a very catchy acronym, SPIT. IP telephony is a protection of IP telephony is what it's all about. And that then detects these spam calls and blocks them. And what's happening now is those same uh, applications, those, the same ha hacker applications, have now added support for H323 into those tools. And I think it's taken them a while because A, it wasn't worth their time because there weren't enough out there. And it's a much more complicated protocol. And so it, was, it would be harder for them to develop to it. Um, and then what's happened more recently is a lot more of systems like uh, systems like Cisco's call manager now is the basis of their video solution as well. If you, the latest uh, video endpoints are integrated with their voice system. So voice and video is becoming one system nowadays. And so if your video system if it is exposed to the internet, then your voice system is exposed to the internet. And video systems, a common way to do it is H323. So these applications are trying to use H323 to get into something like a PBX and then get out again to get your dial phone. Uh -huh. Now, that in itself, if, if the systems are properly configured, it shouldn't be possible, but you make people make mistakes, they leave an opening, and these things are just, they'll, they'll just try everything to try and find that little opening. Well, I, I take that as, um, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so that's what, that's what they're trying to do. The side effect is, as they're trying to find this opening, they're just hammering calls in at that system. Yes, yeah, so I was going to say that it's kind of a good news, bad news situation. The good news is they're not really trying to get the video conferencing systems. They're not trying to spy on your meetings. They're not trying to get your, your financials and your you know, strategies. They're not trying to listen to your calls, which is good news. No. But the bad news is if they're just looking for dial tone, if they're looking to get you know, into your network so they can make free calls and sell them, they're going to be, like you said, hitting everyone, which means this is a massive spam attack, which means – during your meetings, your system will ring, and it's not going to be someone listening, but it's going to ring. You'll hang up. It'll ring again. It'll, it's, it's an annoyance and disruption on a massive scale, potentially. Yeah. So let me tell you about a couple of our customers, uh, real-life stories where this really, you know, these are the stories where this came to light to us. One of them, it was so common in the customers' meetings that they had an extra person. They'd have a junior person attend all of the meetings and stand there with a remote control at the back of the room and press ignore every oh, time wow. a call came in. Because, you know, you call waiting comes in, you get a little window, and you have to sit there and press ignore, ignore. And every five to ten seconds, a call will be coming in. So their system was pretty unusable. Wow, so, the that, other so one, it is, that is a concern. I mean, that's, that, that's, that, that'll affect business. I mean, business. that made the system pretty much unusable. Uh, the other great story we have was a, a customer who was evaluating our equipment. They were expanding their video deployment. They had some uh, some Cisco or Polycom, I don't remember which one it was, on one of our systems. And they were also getting these spam calls on all of the systems, except ours. <laughs> and so they ended up trading out all of those systems and putting Starleaf in all of them. You know, I, I do want to get into to what makes Starleaf uh, uh, unique and, and immune to this. But, but first, I want to ask... How far along do you think we are in the progression? These things always start off with little anecdotal stories, and then they get mass. I remember the first time a friend told me he got a weird email from a Nigerian prince who wanted some help getting his money. I thought it was the most bizarre thing. And six months later, we all had spam filters on our emails because it was just out of control. Is this, is this a today problem, a 2015 problem, or is it just kind of along the curve? Uh, I think we're along the curve. Um... You know, it's going to get worse, and people are going to start noticing it, and then people are going to start taking steps to, to prevent it. Mm. Um, you know, just to, just let me just give you an idea of how bad it is. <clears throat> Here's a quick screen share. I mean, this is a log of one of our devices. Um, the, and it, you're seeing here, the calls are coming in, you know, 10 seconds apart, 39, 45. Wow. So about 10 seconds apart, and you can see different uh, prefixes being tried. There's one zero 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 one zero. 
and, uh, and they're coming from different IP addresses. So it's a fairly sophisticated attack coming from lots of different sources. But you know, the key is that all of them are trying different phone numbers, which is what lets us know it really is trying to get dial tone. And the other uh, thing to notice, and this is how you can tell if you're being subjected to this particular attack, is they all come in with a caller ID, Cisco. Now, in, in fairness to poor old Cisco, I don't think this has got anything to do with them. Right. I think they're, they're, the hackers are just putting that in as the caller ID uh, so that, you know, so that the finger is not pointed at them. So it looks innocent. Wow, so it this, is, this isn't uh, some kid in his mom's basement. These guys are serious. Oh, yeah, this is, this is, these, and if you look up these IP addresses, they're in India, they're in the Ukraine, they're in Russia, they're all over the place. So, so this is a sophisticated uh, operation trying to get at this dial tone. So now let's spend a couple minutes on, on Starleaf. Um, now, a, a quick disclaimer, I've, I've been friends with the Starleaf team for many years, and I am a big fan, um, but um, you guys, um, uh, Starleaf is not a sponsor of LDV, so this is my personal unbiased opinion. Um, I just, you know, I think it's a, a great product. Um, uh, aesthetics aside for a minute, I want to get to the aesthetics of it, but uh, of course you have the intrap cloud support that everyone's looking for and uh, a very unique workflow, which I think is great. You support the traditional uh, scheduled calendar meeting, which is how we met today, but you also support a very direct phone-like um, direct dial. I, I, we've always wanted a video phone. We didn't want video conferencing. That's a different thing that people have to learn. When I make a video call, the way we make a phone call, and, and Starleaf allows a very natural um, phone call, like video call experience, which I think is great for adoption. Uh, but the, the thing that really sets you guys out is the aesthetics. It's, it's, just, it's just a heck of a sexy UI. It just really is. If, um, it looks, it's competitively priced, but it really looks like it's, it looks like premium. It looks like expensive. I mean, if, if I was still working at a law firm, and I wanted to put something on all my lawyers' desks that looked like it was out of a movie to impress the clients. Uh, yeah, Starleaf would be the beginning of the discussion and, and maybe the end of the discussion. It really, it really looks great and it's really cool. But, um, you know, my, my unbiased opinion aside, if you guys are an interop cloud solution and I can call into you from my H323 uh, systems, how are, or how are you guys any less vulnerable than everybody else out there? What, what makes Starleaf immune to this? Well, first of all, thank you very much, David, for the for the kind words about our uh, about our usability and our aesthetics. We we have spent a lot of time really perfecting them, so it's it's really great to hear someone who actually appreciates it. Um, what we do that the, the reason we are uh, we are immune, and you know, in fairness, we're not the only solution that's that's immune. A properly designed network system will be immune to it, and. I, I guess the big advantage of using Starleaf is because we're a cloud-based solution, we have a team of experts that make sure it's configured right and that there are no loopholes left, and then all of our customers can benefit from that team's expertise. So in general, the way you make it secure is you have everything, all the endpoints are behind a firewall. That's one thing. So there's nothing directly exposed to the internet. We do have internet points of presence where people can call our users. And we sit and we, just like the, the, the SPIT uh, technology I told you about earlier for SIT, we monitor those calls and monitor those points of presence. And any calls coming in that aren't destined to one of our registered users, so if they're trying to guess an ID or a, an extension, then we're going to detect that and we're just not going to propagate the call. We're going to terminate it right at that point of presence. So it never hits our main infrastructure. It gets stopped at the firewall. And I mean, so we, we still get hit that log I showed you with hundreds of calls on it. Those were the spammers trying to hit us. So we're not uh, immune to being attacked. We just have defenses in place to stop the attack getting anywhere near our infrastructure. Oh, kind of like the, the spam filter on my email. I still get hit with them every day, but yep. they're not in my inbox. They're not affecting exactly. my business. Exactly, exactly the same uh, scenario. Now, the difference between Starleaf and um, if you were to run your own infrastructure, that would be equivalent to you using something like Gmail, which has a spam filter that Google manages for you, versus you installing some scripts and writing some code and or installing some software on your own laptop where you had to manage it. 
And, you know, you've got to believe that Google are going to do a better job than yeah. you could do yourself. Yeah, you can't, you can't leave Although it. Although I'm sure you're very skilled at, at writing scripts and so on, David. Uh, but Google, not as much as I'd like to be. Yeah, it's, it's, in video conferencing, people have enough trouble ad adapting from the phone world to the video world, and we want to make it easier for them. Um, you really don't want to leave things to, to, the, to the users. You don't want the users to have to protect themselves. The more you can bake into the solution, uh, that's another thing I like about Starleaf. Uh, one thing you need to do for video is another example of, of, of how you guys do that. Um, you need to make sure your network connection is good. So I can use my yeah. own tools to diagnose my network. And then, uh, but Starleaf, I, I don't know how it works, but there's something in the background. I noticed when I was, uh, either when I was installing and when I was making my first call, I got a little message that you guys were checking my bandwidth to make sure it was correct. I'm like, yeah. oh, they're taking care of the users. You really, you really can't ask the users to do it for themselves, and that goes for that goes for the security as well. Yeah, absolutely. So our stuff all sits behind firewalls, including our endpoints. So you sitting at home in your home office, you go whatever firewall and or network router you have in place. We go through that router securely. It's all encrypted. We measure the bandwidth. It it just takes all those decisions out of the user's hands. They just have to choose who they want to call and. Press that button. Yeah, uh, on that that heck of a, a sexy UI. I, it really looks like you guys were spending a lot of time looking at Apple design. Uh, I've, everyone's, everyone wants to look like an Apple design, but uh, the, the Starleaf one, that's the one when I show it to uh, friends and colleagues, they go, oh, that one looks nice. Is, is that an Apple thing? I'm like, no, it's, 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 <laughs> uh, it's Starleaf. So, uh, fantastic. Yeah. So, um, OK, well, I, I really appreciate it. I learned a lot today. I've learned, uh, I think the key takeaways here are that this is happening. And, and it's for real. This isn't just, you know, Will wants to make a big deal because his system is immune to it. It is actually happening in the world and everyone's going to have to address it. Um, it's safe to have your video conferencing systems in your meeting rooms. It's not that people are trying to spy on us, although it does show the vulnerability. So put your precautions in case, but don't start throwing your video conferencing. Don't start unplugging them. It's okay. Uh, this is an annoyance and a disruption thing. It's not a security. Well, it's a different kind of security thing. Um, and that it is happening, so we need to need to be ready for it. Um, anything yep. else you'd like to, to share with our, our viewers on this topic before we before we wrap up? Well, if it's bothering them, they just need to give us a call. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You can check them out at, at starleaf.com. Um, and uh, for, for more videos like this and information about collaboration, please check me out at letsdovideo.com. So uh, thanks, thanks so much, Will, for joining me. Thank you very much, David.